Positivo e positiva, estamos começando mais um Positivamente, episódio especial num collab que nós estruturamos no primeiro congresso Legado Cristão, em parceria com Espiritualmente também, outro podcast do meu amigo e irmão Douglas. E nesse episódio nós vamos conversar com Kevin Bolden. E esse episódio é um episódio onde a gente vai conversar sobre homeschooling. É um episódio em inglês, então me perdoe se meu inglês não é perfeito ainda, mas com certeza nós temos perguntas muito bacanas aqui e uma troca muito legal. Vai ter a legenda no episódio, então se aproveita o tempo agora para poder aprender com o Kevin, que está há 14 anos fazendo homeschooling com a sua família e hoje palestra pelo mundo todo. Kevin, thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I look forward to it. And, and I know that you have 14 years of experience. We have been homeschooling about 16 years now. 16 years now. Yes, quite a bit. We have a lot of issues here in Brazil about this, this conversation because we are in a culture war. Yes, very much so. So the first question is about, about of it. So we don't have the edu educational freedom to, to appoint to point in our society. Well, what I can say is that it's, Brazil would be stronger if they did have educational freedom. And uh, I, I'm aware of the risks here, I'm aware of the Supreme Court decisions, aware of the state of the law. And what I would say to folks is, educational freedom is good, and we just need to continue to fight, continue to press forward, continue to advocate, uh, both in the legislature, in the courts, and then of course in the court of public opinion with the, with the people so that they can have the freedom. I think Brazil will be stronger because of it. What is the difference between the traditional school, the, the, the core difference between the traditional school and homeschooling to, to our public understanding? Yeah. Let me give you a, a brief answer to that question. In, in the traditional public school system, what you have is a, a general system that we fit kids into the system, whether it works well for them or not. So that's the general thing. We create this, this pipeline, if you will, of kindergarten through 12th grade or whatever the compulsory ages are, and we force kids to adapt to that system. With homeschool, what we do is we look at the child first and we build the system and the framework around the child. So rather, rather than forcing the child into the system, we have the child first and we build the system around it. So I think that is a real primary distinction between the two. Very good. One of the, the, the issues we, we talk about here Uh, between the, the two worlds uh, of Christian people and, and other peoples? How, how can we socialize our kids in homeschooling? Well, you know, we have, in the U.S. at least, we have done lots of studies on the impact of homeschooling on children. Are they socialized? Are they not socialized? Is there a problem? And I will say at the outset, the studies demonstrate that there is no socialization problem. Children in the U.S. are home educated, and, there, and there's a few million of them are equally as socialized or more socialized than those in the, in the public schools. So um, the first, as I say, factually, it's just not true. The, the second thing that I would highlight is, you know, as you know, and many homeschooling families know, there is no real risk of lack of socialization in the homeschool environment. There are many, many options, many, many opportunities, many, many activities, extracurricular, curricular, sports. You know, we just listened, I just listened to a uh, Uh, an orchestra upstairs uh, of Christian kids from a variety of home, from a variety of educational backgrounds, and they're all together. They're all socialized, and so that's the that's the first thing I'll say is a statistically, it's not a problem. We know that from studies out of the United States. And secondly, there are great opportunities for homeschool kids, private school kids, and public school kids to be socialized, not just with their peers, but with the greater society. And so it, it, it's really not an issue for a Christian family or for a non-Christian family. All, you know, all families have that opportunity. Why would parents would choose homeschooling if there is no issue? Well, there's a couple of reasons why they do. Um, I, will, I won't get into the statistics of it, but I mean, I think really at the heart of it for most homeschool parents is they love their kids and, and they want the best for their kids. Yeah. And I, I mean, I really believe that parents are in the best position to educate their children. I mean, I mean, you tell me, Marcelo, who knows a child greater than their parents? There is nobody. There is no one who knows my eight children better than my wife, Wendy, and me. And that's true for every family. 
And so I think if, if you have two people or one person who know this child the best, who love them the most, who are the most attuned to who that child is, what their dreams are, what their fears are, what their goals are, that is the best person who's best equipped to educate the child. So most parents homeschool because they know that that's true and they believe that that's true. It doesn't mean they have all the answers. It doesn't mean they don't have questions. It doesn't mean that they don't have some reservations or some concerns. Yes. But they think that those can be overcome because of the love that they have for their life kids. So I think that's a real primary fight for many, many families. Okay. And one of, one of the problems, one of the arguments, one of the issues is this, these contradictions between these two worlds. Yes. I can't I can put my faith in education. So one, th this is one, one of the problems. Because, as you said, uh, I, as a father, I want to, to give my children the best. Absolutely. So, one of the problems is, if the best for me is, is not, uh, just not the, the knowledge, but my faith either, yeah. I want to give them my faith with knowledge. Well, I mean, you know, that's the most important thing. You know, when we homeschool our children, The ultimate goal is not knowing that well. It's not knowing literature. It's not knowing world history. It's, for us, it's passing on the faith to the next generation. It's multi-generational discipleship. And you know, the, the reality is the state is after this too. If you listen to leaders of states, if you listen to international movements that don't believe in scripture, their goal, their stated goal is to pass on the values of the state Yeah. In that generation. So the state has a goal to pass on the state values, the secular values of the state to that generation. And my wife and I, we have a goal to pass on our biblical values to that generation. And so of what course. homeschooling does is regardless of what your faith background is or whether you have a faith background, you can impart the values that you think your children ought to learn instead of saying, hey, whatever the, whatever the state values, that's what they're going to be taught. So It's not that the kids don't learn values. The question becomes, whose values do they learn? Yes. And in homeschool, a parent can teach their kids their own values that they think are important. Yes. We are, we are made of values and principles. Yes. yes. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's really what drives us. You know, we, one of our kids is, uh, one of our children, our oldest daughter is, is 22 years old. She's graduated. She's in college. And, you know, I, I look at her now and I go, what matters the most to me is not what she does academically. But what does she believe in her heart? Who is she in her form? Where is her faith? What are the values? Where's the character that she holds? That's really what matters. And when you get a child past compulsory school age, those things start to become more important. You realize it really wasn't about these other things. It really was about values, as you mentioned. It's yes. very important. Yes. Because one day we are going to face the problems in real life, yes. not academically, but, but with our core value. Yeah. with our biblical value. Yeah, and you know, the, you know, beyond academics, is, you know, is this person honest? Yes. Are yes. they considerate with other people? Do yes. they value other people as human beings? Yes. And those are the things that when a, when a child goes into the world, those are the qualities that matter. And everyone in the world values this. I mean, I can't think of anyone I've met that says, I don't think honesty is a good idea. <laughs> I don't think you should honor other people. I yes. mean, those are universal truths that are within all of us. And I think those values, and we can inculcate those values in our kids as we raise them in the home. Yes. As a future father, I, I, I wanna I wanna have the the arguments to to fight with this with this idea. I I really I really understand, like uh, as almost a pastor, and I know that the character drive their lives. If the character is good, their lives will, will, will be good. We, 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 as a father, want to give them not only knowledge, not academically, but true value, true, true principles to drive their lives. Yes. How do homeschooling networks and communities help in facilitating social interaction for children? You have spoken here about the, there's no issues about the socialization. Well, let me, yeah, let me, let me try to answer that in the best way that I can. And, you know, the, I, I do want to say there are many kids that grow up in private schools, that grow up in public schools, 
that do very well, that are honorable people, that are honest, that, that are socialized, that have, that have, that have high character. So, you know, that you, that the child can go to any one of these options and do very well in life. You know, it's interesting when you look at the public school, what we do is, you know, I've got, let's say, a, I've got a fifth grader at home. If I were to send him to school, he would, you know, get on a bus that I would drop him off. He would go to school and he would spend most of his day with children of his age. And so when they think of socialization, often what they think of is a child who goes to a, a certain environment, who's put in a classroom with kids all their age. What our children get instead in the home, when they're educated at home, is they get exposure and interaction with children of different ages, with children from different grades, with children from different backgrounds, with children from different religions, with adults and kids alike. And so the question becomes when you're looking at socialization, I think it's actually better that a child not just have exposure to children their age and they get along with, you know, 20 other fifth graders, but can they get along with you? You know, could one of my kids sit down here and talk to you because they're used to talking to adults? Could they come and network in this environment and be comfortable because this is their normal environment? And, you know, what we've seen, you know, statistically is, you know, the homeschool children are, are very well adjusted. They're civically engaged. They're more tolerant. Uh, they're, they're politically uh, astute and they're able to interact again, not just with their own age group, but with uh, children and adults and young adults from all different backgrounds. So that's what we see actually plays out. And I think that's actually a higher degree, more mature degree of socialization than just, can you, can you hang out with kids their age? Yes. It makes sense. It does. I think it does. Make it's, sense. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm thinking about it because the traditional schooling, uh, I have a lot of problems with traditional schooling. Not because I, I want to make a homeschooling to my my future and future children, but uh because we have a lot of uh how can I say it's so boring traditional schooling. It's so yeah, well for a lot of kids it is, yeah. It's just it's not engaging. I, mean, I don't I mean I really don't think it's how we were meant to learn. Yeah. I don't think a child is meant to learn at 10 years old to go to a classroom and sit in a classroom and hear somebody talk to them and sit at this desk and do a worksheet and open a book. I mean, to me, it's like if you want to learn about nature and you want to learn about, you know, the, the, the forest and the trees and the plants and the grass, go take a hike, go look at the trees, go, go touch the bark. Go touch. I mean, it's like yes. these things that make lots of sense. And, you know, this is what parents do when their kids are young. I mean, from the time the child is born until they, they are forced to go to school, this is what all parents do. They give their kids oxygen, they give them building blocks, they give them picture books, they give them, you know, different types of materials in the books that they can touch. This is what, this is what carpet feels like. This is what tile feels like. And so they have all these sensory experiences. And for some reason, when they reach a certain age as society, we have said, we're going to stop all this experiential learning and we're going to open a textbook, put you in a classroom and force you to learn this way. It's, it's really kind of odd when you think about it. I think it's awful. Have no 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 dynamic. Well, and, and like you, in some of these classes, I would probably be bored too. Oh. I, I would sit in them and go, "This is kind of boring," and yet I force my kid to go there. Yes, I mean, why? I I I have a lot. I had a lot of problems when I when I was in traditional school. Yeah. After grad graduation, there, there's there's more exciting and, and better ways to give kids information. Yes. And to impart information and. You know, really, I mean, when you think about it, every every parent really is a homeschool parent. Yeah. If you've ever done homework with a child, I mean, if you send your kids to public school and they come home and they have homework and you help them with homework, you're educating at home. Yes. And so every parent, almost every parent, does some form of home education. Certainly they do it before they go to school. They do it after school when children need help with their studies. And they do it, of course, when the kids graduate. I mean, a parent... I mean, even with our older kids now, you never stop teaching your kids. You never really stop walking the life. I call my mom and my dad now and say, hey, can you give me some help on how to navigate this situation? What to do? How did you handle it? And they're still parenting me. They're still influencing me. They're still helping me learn and grow in the station that I'm in life now. So I think these set years of compulsory school, we can do the very same thing. And we should do that. Let's talk about democracy. Let's do it. We are in a democracy in Brazil, but not a real democracy. Because if I can make homeschooling, it's not a democracy. I, I, I don't have the, 
the freedom to to make a homeschooling. Sure. How can we win this this battle? What what is the argument to to talk, to teach, to to spread to our society, understand the the benefits with homeschooling? Well, as you know, the, the battle has been long and the battle may be long for quite some time. So the first thing I'll say is we, we don't ever give up. You know, we have a we have a republic in the United States, we have a different constitution, you know, we have different Supreme Court cases that have come along that have provided this bedrock of parental rights. And, you know, homeschooling is grounded in the soil of parental rights. So when you when you when you boil it down, what you have to ask yourself is who do these kids belong to? When when the Lord blesses you with children, who do they belong to? When the child turns six years old, whose are they primarily? Are they yours or are they the state's? And that really answers the question of whether we're going to give parents the right to home educate. Yes. And if they can home educate, then do we have to enforce a national curriculum? Do we have to force this child to take, you know, a certain level of standardized tests? Um, when do they need to go to school? What do they need to be taught? All of these questions. But when you boil it down, the question becomes, who has a primary right over this child? And someone has to exercise it. You know, there's all of this talk in the UN and other places about the rights of the child. The child has rights. But if you're looking at a seven-year-old child, the question is, someone has to execute those rights on behalf of the child. Somebody has to be the guarantor of the safeguard of those rights. And many states think that the state's job is to safeguard those rights. In the United States, we have this great foundation that says, you know, the parents have a right to direct the nurture and upbringing of their children. We have cases that say the child is, is not the mere product of the state. The parents have the responsibility and the high duty to educate the child and to seek their best welfare. And so, um, you know, I don't know where the future holds in Brazil. I don't know where we're going to go. Sure. But I do know that the battle is real. And I do know that parents who believe in this, all parents who believe in yes. the rights of liberty, ought to fight for it. Whether you're homeschooling parents or not, it's a battle that you need to fight for simply because you are a parent and you love your kids and you know your child and you ought to have rights as a parent to make these types of decisions. Yes. And yet, you you have said, uh, you, you said that only two million people, parents, make homeschooling. The United States have uh, 400 million people? We have, yeah, I think 330 million people at least last night. Though, so, yes. we got a lot of people. And only two million parents make homeschooling. Well, we, yeah, I think the estimates, that, you know, they vary, but somewhere probably between three and five million children at least are home educated. So I don't know how many families that equates to, but yeah, three to five million children, I would say, are, are home educated in the United States. Less than two percent yes. of United States. How, how many Christians United States have? I don't know. I don't know. I have a book, statistics on that. Yes. Two to make sense to us, uh, to see the proportional mm -hmm. of... Uh, we ha Here in Brazil, we have uh, more than 15% of, of Christians. Okay. And I don't know the statistics about homeschooling because we, we don't talk about it. Right. But we have, we have uh, uh, some parents fighting to, to have the right to, to homeschooling. If you, if, you can, if you can teach me as a future fa father, what what the three best advices to to start learning how to to homeschooling, how to make homeschooling? Well, the, the the first thing I'll say might be might be a little bit off, might seem a little odd at the outset, but I think anyone who wishes to homeschool and as you talk, to inculcate values in your children. Uh, you know, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. My primary responsibility is to honor Christ with my life. And so I need to have habits that I want to teach my kids, not just when I speak, but if they just watch me. You know, one of the one of the things that you gotta remember when you come educate your kids is you're always around them. They're always watching you. But something doesn't go right, how does mom and dad respond? When a child doesn't listen, how do mom and dad respond? When something valuable gets broken in the home, how do mom and dad respond? And that's it that's my character on display. 
whether I want it to be on display or not, it is on display. So one of the things I, the first things I would say for, for any parent, particularly those who are educating is, am I walking in the faith? Am I walking according to the values that I say I hold dear? So it's really, it's a look in the mirror and say, who am I? Do I live the things that I profess with my mouth? Is the walk of my life consistent with the words of my mouth? And I think that's first and foremost. The other thing that I would tell any kind of new homeschooler is, um, I would just give them confidence that they can do it. There's there's many, I mean, I'll tell you, many, many days of Marcelo where we, we look in the mirror and my wife and I, we go, can we still do this? Because it's hard. I mean, homeschooling is a lifestyle. It's not an educational choice. It's not just a way that I want my child to learn information. It is a totally distinct and unique way of living. It's it's Deuteronomy 6, I think, from the Bible. It's, it's teaching my child as we get up in the morning, as we get ready for breakfast, as we go about our day, as we drive to activities, as we have dinner together, and as we go to bed. And that's what Deuteronomy says. Teach your children during all of these various seasons of life. And it's a lifestyle choice, and it's very hard. So I would, I would just encourage any parent who's, who's starting it, just encourage them to say, you can do it. It's every day will not be easy. Every you will have hard days. You will have days that you want to quit. You will have days where you wonder where whether this is the best. And the reality is, it is the best, and you can. Do it. And the second thing I would think, as, as we talked about earlier, don't forget the primary goal. The primary goal is to disciple your children. It's to impart values that you hold dear and that you know we benefit them as they grow up. And this can be easy to forget sometimes. In the, when you're teaching math and the child is frustrated, when they don't want to learn about grammar and how to diagram a sentence, and what's a verb and what's a noun and what's a participle, and what is past tense, you have to remember that this is an opportunity. This is something that gives me the chance to incorporate value. Maybe the value that the child is going to learn is not so much the Latin that they're learning, but the value of perseverance through something that's hard. Challenging themselves when they want to give up. Learning to interact with a sibling who is frustrating them. Learning to live in community with other people. So, you know, look at yourself and who you are as a person. Be confident and never give up. And remember what the goal is, which is teaching your child the, the, to be a disciple whatever values you hold dear. And if, if parents will do those three things, not only will they continue on the journey of homeschool, but I think they'll be successful in that journey because they will always keep the end in mind. And as you know, every day, I mean, every day it's hard to keep the end in mind when the mundane of life comes in, when the hard parts of life come in. I have trouble remembering. What am I doing? Why am I here? Yeah. What's my, and what's the end goal of my job? I mean, you, you host a podcast, you probably ask yourself, you know, I do these interviews, I do the podcast, but what's the hope? What's the goal of the podcast? And so you keep that end in mind every day you sit down and talk to those. And that's what a homeschooling parent does, is keep the end in mind in the mundane of life. Very good. So, be real, live a lifestyle, and disciple your ch children. Amen. You're Amen. all set. You're all set. You're, <laughs> on, you're on track to do God has children, and God calls children to be his own. And I can lead my children to the scripture. I can lead them to the word. And I can lead them to math, and I can lead them to English, and I can lead them to Portuguese. But I can't force them to learn. But I can create the environment and the opportunity where that learning is most likely to occur. Same thing as a believer. I can lead my kids to the place where faith is likely. And I think God primarily works through families. That's the, that's the main learning community of every community in the world. At least in family you know, I think it's critical. Yes, very good. Very good. I'm just, I'm just uh, thinking about my future, and I'm excited for it. I'm yeah, excited yeah. For I, I, I'm trying about nine years to have children. Okay. So me and my wife uh, have a problem. Yeah. So we are going, we are going to adopt. Okay. This Great. year. Great. This year. Yes. Yes. And and this episode, uh, it's a it's an opportunity for me to to learn about. It. I'm, I'm a curious here. Well, and you know, what, what you'll find is, you know, that when the Lord gives you children, adopted or otherwise, even even the struggles that you and your wife have gone through now with the last nearly a decade will help to shape how you educate your children because you've walked through each while. Yes. I mean, you've walked through a long time with your wife and this will be an opportunity. God is shaping you and your wife 
in a way that will benefit whatever child is in your home. So I'm now thinking of this, it's a struggle, but it's also an opportunity. And so I'm excited. I'm very excited. I'm neither. Yeah. <laughs> I'm neither. So uh, to the final, I have two more questions here. What are the, the concerns about uh, the parents that make homeschooling to integrate the children to the society? Well, I don't know, at least in the U.S., a lot of parents are not, you know, homeschooling parents are not really concerned about how to integrate their child. And, and I think that there's a couple of reasons for that. I'll share maybe, maybe the highest one. When, when I went, you know, when I graduated from high school and I went to college and graduated high school, What helped me integrate into, you know, into society? It was the character that shaped me through all these experiences. It, it wasn't necessarily that I knew certain facts, or that I got certain grades on tests, or that I went to a certain school. And, I, and I'll just share, I, I haven't shared, but I, mean, I was not a homeschool child growing up. And I went to public school most of the, most of the time. I went to private school in high school. So, you know, homeschooling is not a part of my personal background. It's something that we came to later in life after, after we had children. Uh, but what you know, what, when people think about, well, what helps a child? Be, what, have, what helps any child be successful in life? Those things can be taught in the midst of environmental situations. So the things that we've already mentioned, so being honest, being able to sit down with somebody who disagrees with you and how to resolve an issue, how to work on a team, how to interact with other people. I mean, these are the skills that help somebody integrate into any culture and into any society. And I think that in hopes well, you, you can teach those things and you can tailor them to the child, right? I mean, what, what child of mine needs to, to, to be able to integrate well is different than another child needs to integrate well. And that's different than the function. So when homeschooling allows you to say, okay, these are the strengths of this child. This is the weaknesses of this child. These are the things that they struggle with. And what do I need to do as a parent to set this particular child up? to be successful when they're finished with their, their formal education. So education will continue on their way. When they finish their formal education, what specific areas can I help this child will overcome? And I think a parent at home with their own kids is in the best position to help a child do that. And when they do that, children integrate. I mean, children integrate in the U.S. I mean, we've got you know millions of folks have kids, millions of folks have graduates. Many of them integrate very, very well. Yeah. I mean, there are you can meet a homeschooled child You know, in the policy congress, working in big corporations as entrepreneurs, as construction workers. I mean, they're just all over the place. And all of them are integrated in society very well. And it's because of the values and the emphasis and those types of things that they're taught grown up. It's not because of necessarily just the academics. The parents, uh, they, they do have real concerns until then go to homeschooling. Okay? As a future father, I know your, uh, I understand your, your, your idea, your, your answer, but we you have real problems in the world that is equal to the children that grown up in traditional schooling and homeschooling. But as, as father, as a future father, when my children grow up uh, in homeschooling, I know that when I, uh, I integrate them To, to the society, we, they, they will struggle in some questions uh, about faith. Even if I'm, I'm real, if, even if I, I, I live a lifestyle, even if I disciple them, they will struggle in real life. About these concerns, specifically, how can I, 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 I help my future children to fight this, this battle that we know? Here's what I would say. Every believer fights the fight of faith every day. Whether you went to public school, private school, homeschool, or some other option. Every believer who has faith fights that fight of faith every day. I fight it. I mean, I wake up days and, and I wonder, and I, and, I, and I go to the Lord and I say, Lord, help me. I need your spirit, your strength today to live faithfully for your kingdom. And there are days when that's easy. And there are days, as you know, when that's real hard. Yes. And, and I think all Christians are that way. And my kids will be the same way. It's how the Lord keeps us in his, in, you know, in his kingdom by constantly reminding us that you are dependent on him. I'm dependent on him every day. 
and, and, I, and I'm never going to get to the place where I'm not dependent on him and he will never, Lord willing, let me get to the place. And so I, I don't necessarily fear that for my kids. One thing that you do, that, that homeschooling does and allows you to do very well is you keep a relation, strong relationship with your kids. And it's the relationship that you have with your, your future children that you develop and cultivate over 10, 20 years. When they wake up when they're 23 years old and they have the day that says, Dad, I'm really struggling, you have such a rich relationship and history with them that they pick up the phone and they send you the text and they call you. Or you can reach out and say, hey, how's it going? You can even be proactive and say, hey, you know what? You know, let's say you got a 17-year-old son. I mean, I, I've said this to Michael because I look, I woke up today and it's a hard day. Yes. Right? I wrestled with the flesh. I wrestled with the desire to be selfish. I wrestled with maybe whether the Bible is true. I wrestled with faith. And, and your kids see this as they grow up. So when they ask a question when they're 20, they can know, you know what? My, my dad wrestled with this. And God has kept him all these years. And the fact that I'm wrestling with it doesn't mean that something is, doesn't mean that there's a big problem. It means that I'm just a human being. I mean, I, I'm an image bearer of the Lord, for sure. But I'm also a human being. And, and, you, and your child, whether they're six, 16, 60, they will always wrestle. They will always struggle. So, I mean, I look at that and I say, homeschooling gives me, excuse me, gives me an opportunity to teach them all of those things that they grow share with them the successes share with them the failures share with them the struggles and i, I mean i share those things with my parents now i mean i, mean, I call my my dad home, you know when i'm driving home from work some days and say hey dad you know it's, it's a tough day it's a tough day and he can speak words of encouragement and life into me as a 40 something child of his just like i'm speaking those words of life and encouragement into my teenage kids and my young kids so Homeschooling is is something that happens throughout life, and in the context of education, homeschooling school years, it's just something that homeschooling parents want to continue to do all throughout. Them. You don't want to start, stop, send them to school, and then start again. They just say, "I'm just going to keep this going from the day of birth until the day that I meet my baby, until the day that I go home." And so, I would say it's not something to fear; it's something to acknowledge. And it's something to help grow our faith, to make us depend that each day on the sustainment of the Spirit. So that that's 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 the hope that I have is that you know what Christ called me, and He'll never let me go, and He called my children, and He'll never never let them go, even in the bad days. Uh, the the final part is more practical. We we have a, a good conversation about uh, more the the issues not uh, political issues but uh, the the life of, of parents in very abstract ways about uh, the thinking the 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 emotions so in practical ways how can i start how do i i put in practical yeah practically i, I think there's a there's the, the first thing that i would say is If you know a homeschooling family, go to them and ask them. I mean, go, go to a homeschooling family in your community and just ask them, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? How is it going? Um, and I think that's first. If, if, you, if you need to go online, if you need to go outside of your community, you know, the, those things will work okay too. But um, I think predominantly, if you can find somebody that you can sit down like we're sitting down now and have a cup of coffee, have lunch together and just say, can you tell me about this thing called homeschooling that you're doing? I mean, I, I think that's where you start. The other thing I'll say is there's lots of resources. There's many online resources. Uh, there's lots of curriculum out there. I mean, I was in Brasilia in September. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's just, there's lots of resources here in Brazil that a family can go to. You. And so, you know, no one's alone here. If you, if you want to, if you want to do this thing called homeschooling and educate your child and believe in it, Find a community that you can plug into, a local community where you can share the successes and you can share the challenges, where you can be honest and say, I don't know what I'm doing, help me. Do that. Look through some curriculum, you know, look through some options, see what's out there, see what see what things you, you can plug into and utilize those resources and take advantage of them. And uh, I think also just, you know, start planning. You, know, don't, you don't have to wait until your child is at a quote unquote school age 
to start. If you've got young kids, if you've got toddlers, a one, two, or three year old, and you're thinking about this post, and I'm start now asking the questions. Start now. And then the final thing I'll leave you with is it's it's kind of like the step of faith. You there's there's a sense in which you have to take a step. Sometimes we get so paralyzed by fear and so paralyzed by the unknown that, that we don't even take the first step. And so I would encourage any family to say, you can do that, but only you can take the step, that first step to start. And I can't take it for you. We have our, we had our own homeschool journey. The families we know have their own homeschool journey. But each of those families, each of those parents had to take the step for themselves, had to take the step for their kids. No one can take it for them. So, you know, plug into your community, get to know the resources that are out there, and take the first step. When I mean, you have to take the step, and I would encourage any parent to do it. Those those are practical things that you can do. Of course, I mean, I work for an, for an organization, HSLDA. We can help. We have lots of resources. We have lots of consultants. If, if any member who hears this wants to know or have questions, they can reach out to HSLDA. Um, if you call them, if you email them and tell them you want to talk to me, that they know how to get in touch with me. And so utilize all these resources. You know, I know there's lots in Brazil as well, um, but there's lot. There's a whole community that will help you do it practically on the ground, day in, day out. What is it? We, we are ending okay. our episode. That was a pleasure to hear you, well, it was a to, to learn you. with you, and, you, and to be encouraged to start to plug and play. Yeah, plug and play. Yeah, you know, plug I'm, and play. I'm excited by the homeschool movement. So, yes, I, I mean, I'm excited about the people here, and there. I mean, there's there's a there's kind of millions of people here that love liberty, want to see freedom grow in this country, education of freedom. Yes. So be, be, I mean, I think, I'm, I hope people are excited. You can talk to, you know, your fellow Brazilians about this, but they ought to be excited, the movement that's afoot here. I mean, not discouraged of where we're currently at, but encouraged of where, of what's possible and where things are going. I think it's very exciting. I'm, ex I'm excited yes. as someone who lives in West Virginia about what's going on in Brazil. I, I'm, I love watching it. I love talking to friends here, and I'm excited to see what the home does. It's going to be great. Thank you very much, Kevin. I, I hope you'll reach out when, when, When the Lord gives you a child, I would love to hear yeah. about it, see pictures, and hear from your wife and that's going. We, we are in contact now, okay. so in the future, I, I send I send you a picture. Please, please. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. You know, my, I mean, I, I mean, I travel quite a bit and talk to folks in other countries. Yes. I tell my kids what we're doing. I show them pictures. We pray for families that can meet. Yeah. And so you know, if you send me the picture, I'll show it to my family. Got on your table, and we'll we will be glad to let you, your wife, and your child up. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Positiva e positiva, mais uma vez. É, o inglês não foi o melhor, mas o nosso amigo aqui, Kevin, trouxe muito conhecimento, muito encorajamento para que você, como pai, possa, de fato, dar o start, né? se plugar uma comunidade, buscar os recursos, dar o start. E, se necessário, você que não é pai, mas conhece algum pai que está buscando essa informação, esse start, esse encorajamento, compartilhe esse episódio. E, lógico, curta, porque quanto mais a gente propaga aquilo que nós cremos, mais a gente alcança pessoas para que possam viver essa realidade que a gente tanto busca aqui no Brasil. A verdadeira liberdade para, de fato, ser fam sermos famílias que possam ter liberdade para fazer educação em casa com seus filhos. Nos vemos no próximo episódio. Deus abençoe a sua vida e muito obrigado.